about the things I worship you Welcome, welcome to the Corner Cafe, where we have brewed up a great show for you guys tonight. Thanks for being here. Welcome to Corner Cafe. This is where we share the story and heart of an artist. I am Rachel Maines. And I am Jamie, D-A-N-I-E-L. I'm going to start spelling my name. Are you now? Say my name right. I'm the J-A-M-I-E. You know, like Notorious B-I-G, he used to spell his name. Well, I don't know if that's a good thing. He's deceased. Uh, I think I better just say it, huh? I think you should. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I don't know. But don't get it twisted, though. I'm the J-A-M-I-E. We got it. Okay. We got it. You got it, listeners? <laughs> hey, we're going to have a fun corner cafe. And we have Justin Hooper as our featured guest. But hey, we're going to talk about mm-hmm. um, revelation today instead of creationism. Ooh, I'm scared. Yeah, and you know, which is interesting because t- on the way here, I was like, well, I don't really know creationism facts is coming to me. Uh-huh. And I thought, mm-hmm. let's talk about revelation, just the way the world's going. Yep. I've been reading revelation. I've been trying to r- listen to pastors uh-huh. who are spot on and there are a lot of different perspectives but mm-hmm. jamie you and i agree that we're we're pre-trib and what did you say before we taped the show i said i totally believe in uh, pre-trib because i want to get out here as quickly as possible <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then we found out that justin is also you know he's a studier of yes um, he is revelation well, he's old school studying too, too. He's yeah. talking about, you know like so way back in the day but you got this in the mail in the, yeah i got something in the mail that that coincidentally is talking exactly about what we're discussing here. It says, in case no one ever told you, uh, this is a pamphlet that was given to me, sent through the mail. It says, I'm the J-A-M-I, no, I'm just kidding. It says, uh, it says Jamie, it says, or current resident, has my address there, and then uh, has a bunch of uh, little pictures on it. And I couldn't figure out what it was at first because I saw this little alien head, and then I saw some, some little stick figures laying on the ground, and then I saw this hand. Okay, uh, Jamie, get to the point. What, what's well, the point? Well, all the point it is, it's talking about <laughs> <laughs> all the pictures and the little stuff in there has uh, a perspective of revelation. It's a it's a uh, like a time map of revelation um, from Joel two thirty to thirty one, and from Joel two thirty thirty one uh, thirty one and on. Uh, it talks about um, the book of Revelation and like it just in case you miss it, this is your chart to navigate uh, running from the Antichrist go to the bushes and the trees and so forth. <laughs> but no, but seriously, that's what it really is. It's this treaty, treachery, and triumph. Right. Uh, the treaty with uh, Israel, correct? Israel, correct. So uh-huh. the, an- the Antichrist. So Justin and Jamie, question to you guys, as you guys are studiers of God's word, um, do you believe that the, the rapture is imminent, meaning there's nothing else that needs to still happen before we get raptured? And we'll let Justin take this. He, he looks that, like yeah. he's like, <laughs> his, yeah. his head's going right now. He said, any question <laughs> but that one would have done well. <laughs> well that, yeah, I mean, that is a good question. I mean, uh, you know, every generation since uh, Jesus has been looking up and waiting to be taken. And, right. Um, yeah, I um, I got my emphasis in history uh, in, at college, and um, I was always very curious about that right. and if you look back you can see certain points in history it's like oh yeah jesus should have come then <laughs> right right, <laughs> and, right, then, right. And, then, and then and then and then then so um you know there was the i think it was in the uh, 1800s that a group of people sat on their roofs and were waiting because like, it's going to be this yeah. exact day and then which the bible says don't do we, yeah we don't know they the came day down the very hour. disappointed yeah. and embarrassed and <laughs> even jesus i heard <laughs> right. doesn't know the day or the hour that he shall appear um, and interestingly, in Jewish uh, weddings, um, the father only knew when his son would get married. The son didn't even know the date when they would be betrothed. And that's why the, um, the, uh, the lady always had to remain ready, too, because her, her bridegroom's going to come pretty soon. She doesn't know when. Right. He doesn't know when. The father had actually 
uh, announced to the son, okay, go get your bride. Uh-huh. In the same way, um, Jesus doesn't know. Only the Father knows. I hope so. she wasn't fe- uh, feeding the pigs at the time. That would not be <laughs> no. good. In her wedding dress. No. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just an interesting time. We encourage everyone who is yes. listening to read Revelation. Mm-hmm. Uh, try to find a pastor who is teaching about this. Um, I know there's a lot of different perspectives, but I think we just have to be like the Bereans. So scripture, you know, the Bereans studied well the scripture. Mm -hmm. So, and Jamie, what do you feel as you're seeing news and stuff? What's your insight into this? Well, uh, there are a lot of events that are going on. Uh, One of the major events that, as we all can just be grateful for, is what President Trump did against the UEA. I think that's what it was. And that's incredible. You know, first of all, that where he moved the, you know, the... um, embassy american embassy in israel Mm -hmm. was pretty incredible and then to have those uh that that treaty between the two uh several different uh nations uh israel and the palestinians and you know egypt and whoever uh that's pretty 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 incredible no one saw that one coming that was that's amazing and uh and we and of course you know what the bible says is that they uh, i'm going to paraphrase this they that love israel or pray for israel will be blessed Mm -hmm. and i think i believe in my heart this is one of the reasons why we are so blessed is because uh we have that treaty we have that pact we have that love and we have that adoration for the nation of israel um but as far as a lot of things uh that have occurred um you know it's almost like a whirlwind at this point because there is so much going on you know we went through kind of covid and not that covid wasn't real it was real but it was also you know pandered uh, politically through different things um, and and kind of, you know, misconstrued in the sense where there's some stuff, funny, funny gun going on there. But anyway, um, so there's just, there's a lot going on. You almost have to have a diary right beside you when the events are going on and right. write it down. Daily or hourly, Daily. really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I don't know. It's, it's I think, uh, I, I would never say that when, uh, I never say that we are like right around the, the back door or whatever, but I say we are extremely close. I think yeah. our heads are sticking out the back window. Right. Looking well, it's just like when a woman, you know, is having the birth pains or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And a lot of us can look at the world events and think, okay, this is the birth pains. Yes, um, yes. Uh-huh. But, you know, according to the pre-trib, you know, each listener, you have your perspective and we just have to go to the Bible. But pre-trib rapture, mm-hmm. when the pre-trib rapture happens, then the Antichrist will be revealed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I guess from there, they go into the seven-year tribulation. Yeah. Well, and the most important thing is whether, because like you said, Rachel, we all have different perspectives yeah. of the I talked to a friend revelation. who doesn't believe in the yeah. in the rapture at all. Yes, a couple of days ago. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, but the important thing is, is just to be ready. Right. Uh, when you're ready, then you're ready. Then it doesn't matter if it's pre, post, or whatever. Right. Just be ready. Absolutely. You know, because the Bible says be instant in season and out of season. We have to be ready. Right. Uh, and diligently uh, doing the work uh, as he arrives, you right. know, what, what is he going to find us doing? Absolutely. You know? Yeah. No matter what, right. If he, yeah. he, if there's a rapture or not a rapture, which of course Jamie and I believe. So do you believe in, in the rapture too? I've gone, I have gone back and forth. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm, I'm kind of got the question mark right now. I, I think the main thing that's been pointing out or that's been, uh, revealing itself to me is once the whole world sees the word and then I'll come. And I've right. seen these different movements of, mm-hmm. you know, get everyone a Bible by 2025 or by 2033 and these right. types of things. So I think, um, you know, with, with the printing press, you know, and then that was a huge advancement and I just got done reading a book on Martin Luther and how that was just used to right. spread what was actually in the Bible, uh, which was helpful yes. <laughs> to get back to what <laughs> yeah. was actually written in there. <laughs> And then the internet just um, taking it a huge step forward. So yeah. I think that's the main thing I'm watching um, and kind of curious about is uh, these people who their goal is to get every translation, every, you know, of this Bible out there for people to read it on their own. So Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I will also say, Justin, if you don't see Rachel and I sitting here in the next five minutes, we didn't go to the restroom. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Well, I think he's gonna be with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um. It's 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 very interesting, and I just I encourage everyone just to continue to read the word. Yeah. Read mm-hmm. Revelation. I'm Study. reading Revelations right now, mm-hmm. and also listening to a couple of different pastors too who teach on it. Mm-hmm. I don't see a lot of pastors right now teaching on it. Mm-hmm. Um. I have to really dive deep in to search for people who are teaching mm. on it. Do you guys know of any um, good teachers with this particular topic that you guys have listened to? Uh, one of my favorite uh, authors that are out there is John Bevere. I love John Bevere. Yeah. Um, he does this uh, this story. Um, and it's, it's, it's a made-up story, but it has a lot of truth in it, uh, according, you know, just, just the characters are kind of made up, uh, where he talks about, you know, 
revelation and and triumphs and victory and stuff like that. And I don't know how far he goes into it, but it's actually John Bevere is one of my favorite. But there are others out there that you'll probably find that are more old school, uh, like uh, maybe check some of uh, Lester Summerall. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's one of my absolute favorites. Yeah. Um, so there, there's a few out there, you know. But 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 that someone that speaks uh, um, specifically about the Book of Revelation. You, also, Marilyn Hickey. Uh, Marilyn Hickey's got some really good teachings on, uh, you know, uh, it, the you know rapture, antichrist, and things of that nature. Yeah. So those are just a few, yeah. just to name a few. And some know. of my family members had mentioned to me, like um, John MacArthur. Mm-hmm. He's pretty old school, very biblically sound. Um, I've took, taken a listen to some of his stuff. And there's a show I um, watch from time to time called Prophecy Watchers. You can Google uh-huh. that. And they're all about um, the rapture as well, which I think they're pretty interesting. Uh, who's so. the uh, who's the host of that show? Prophecy I, Watchers. What is his name? I I, his name is escaping me. I'll, I'll text mm-hmm. it to you, Jamie. But Prophecy Watchers, Google it. The guy who hosts it reminds me of Santa Claus. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I might tune in. <laughs> right? That sounds good. <laughs> so, I think hey. Jonathan Kahn is another one. K- oh, yeah, Jonathan K-A- Kahn. Is it C-A-H-N? He's been on the Prophecy Watcher channel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's very good. Yeah, he's written a couple books. Yeah. He is smart, Jonathan Kahn. Oh, my gosh. He is. He's very intelligent. All right, well, we're going to go to our song spotlight right now. Nicole, what is it? Our song spotlight tonight, one of our favorite artists. It's actually a new one by Alyssa Lybroth. And next week, guys, we have her producer, Rachel James, on the show. So be sure to tune in for that. You told me not to write another song about you. But that's not something I know how to do The first person to teach me guitar The only one who could ever break my heart Easy on the eyes, better in my mind Redefined, I got a new storyline
our song Spotlight. Thanks, Nicole. Love our song Spotlight. And so we're going to continue this conversation in the weekly special, Jimmy yes. and I, about Revelation and yes. whatnot. Um, Justin, it's great to have you here. We're going to be listening to some of your music, hearing mm-hmm. about your story. Yeah. Looking forward to having absolutely having that conversation with you. We're going to go to a break. We'll be back, though. Stay tuned. KLDC 1220 is a God and country station. You can hear KLDC from the comfort of your own home. Click the Listen Live button on 1220kldc.com. Welcome back to Corner Cafe. This is where we share the story and heart of an artist. I am Rachel Maines, and our guest we've already introduced, Justin Hooper. Hooper. Yes. Justin Hooper. Hooper Hooper. Jay Hoop. Did you That's, ever have people do oh, that? Oh, I get school? that all the time. Jay Hoop Are you is serious? J Hoop Dog. Yep, that was my <laughs> high school nickname. Well, now how would I know that? Yeah, that was great. I didn't great. look in your high school. Yeah, that was good. J Hoop. <laughs> now, now, is that now does that mean because you can you got the J, you can jump, you the, the jump shot, you can shoot basketball? Yeah, you would, would hope so. Um, uh-huh. I played soccer, and then when I was like 12, someone's like, you really should have played basketball. I was like, well, <laughs> that's a mystery opportunity. <laughs> right. I was not good at basketball. <laughs> no, that was not my sport. They'd be like, all right, everybody, because and you, I can't imagine you coming into the to the you know the gym, and they'd be like, all right, Harry, everyone, here comes Jay Hoop. Yeah. Yeah, thinking they well, boy, he's going to ball out. Oh, man, I would play games. A lot of what I heard was Hooper. Oh, just that <laughs> disappointment every time I missed it. So, oh. yeah, one of those last names that are that kind of play on or, words. Or, yeah. 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 All right. So we're going to listen. We were talking about revelations. We're going to listen to all souls. And Justin has an, a very interesting story about this song regarding Facebook. Yeah. So, uh, first, we're going to listen to this song and then we'll come back. Sounds good. We rewrite history just to mess it up again. Truth is relative that we no longer let in.
That was All Souls on Corner Cafe and Justin Hooper. What do you call him, Jamie? Uh, what do I call J-Hoop? J-Hoop. Yep. J-Hoop. J-Hoop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we were very intrigued when we talked about this prior to our, our doing the show. Um, All Souls... You have a story regarding Facebook, and you were in Facebook jail? What is what does this mean? Yeah, well, I still <laughs> actually don't fully know, but um, it was in the middle of just the craziness of this year. and yeah. you know, uh, We're the, still in the middle of it, We right? are still in it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. um, Will we ever get out of it? Probably not. Um, <laughs> but just kind of um, the hypersensitivity to editing things and yeah. stuff online. And mm-hmm. uh, I posted this song, um, which just kind of points out the the world being caught on fire kind of messed up right <laughs> yeah <laughs> and needing some sort of solution yeah and i posted some lyrics from it and saying it's like yes we have a race problem yes we have this problem but we have a deeper problem right um, yes. and for some reason it was denied and then i was put into facebook jail for about two or three months i couldn't buy any ads for anything so oh. i still fully don't know what happened but you could post um, stuff and all that you just couldn't i could post stuff do i couldn't ads. do ads yeah they didn't let me boost anything um and i tried to like and it was after that ad like they'd rejected it and then somehow they let it pass and it's for a just little a bit song. And was, yeah well um it's a song with i guess um the lyrics are edgy <laughs> um they're kind of pointing out that we have a problem um and yeah the chorus is all souls they long for you but some don't know it yet mm-hmm. and i think that kind of goes along with mm-hmm. that uh this year just showing uh, what happens when the kids right. get the keys to the car we can't see over the dash and i feel like we've been <laughs> crashing right. into everything this year um so i think there's a this ache uh for some sort of deep truth that no one's really able to find on their own right and that's just coming out pretty strong this year so this song is kind of speaking to that yeah yeah and we heard the the lyrics mm-hmm. when we listened to it great song yeah i don't but hear just so interesting in mm-hmm. that that you know, Facebook and it, Facebook and a lot of other social media um, outlets are starting to kind of curtail free speech. Mm-hmm. You know, and so what do we do as Christians if the day comes, and, and I think it may, that the Bible is no longer considered free speech because we believe in heaven and hell, and only way is Jesus. And mm-hmm. the culture is definitely it's it's offensive. So it's just an interesting yeah, conversation so to have. Mm-hmm. Have you found, um, I know you were a teacher, Justin. Yes. Um, you know, and I love the school that you taught at. It was Valor. Yes. Yeah. Great did, school. What, did Great you school. touch on the subject? I mean, we don't know exactly what you taught. You're going to tell us. I think it was yeah. music. But do you, in the environment of Valor, is it kind of prepping the students for this kind of talk, if you will, as they get educated? Yeah, I think... Um because they, they have their Bible classes, and I think they do a good job of kind of giving the historical context and right. you know mm-hmm. um, all that stuff. I used to help with their chapels, yeah, uh, there, nice. and uh, was their worship uh, leader, teacher, and guitar teacher. Yeah, and, what a fun job! It was yeah. fun. No. It was fun. I was <laughs> to basically be a guitar teacher. I love it and worship teacher. Oh yeah, I was basically like Jack Black in uh, School of Rock. Right, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's so cool. Christian edition. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it was, it was actually really cool. There was, um, one day I came into class and just picked a random day to show them the top three songs, uh, that were on the billboard chart. This was a few years back and it was love yourself, stressed out and work. And I was like, this is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> this is showing you exactly what, you know, we're, we're kind of trying to, um, sing some encouragement, ag- not mm-hmm. against, but like. You just see um, what's on on the radio currently, and right. it's it's good to um, put something positive and good out there, and you know, also to get people to think. I, right. I think yeah. uh, something that you know gives people pause, and I think we're so inflamed right now right. Yeah. that people don't think; they just react. Right. right. So they're like, "Oh, that offends me," and they don't think about why. <laughs> um, so I like the idea, and kind of encourage my students too to like put out those thought provoking things, and then ask people like, "Well, why are you offended by that?" Right. Or, right. You know. What's your thought behind that? Yeah, because that's a very interesting thing is study of culture and school, right? Not yeah. saying Christian schools, um, but culture and school now, it seems, and I don't have kids in school, but I don't have kids. But with that, it seems that there's being taught in the school system that nobody can offend you or nobody can disagree or everybody gets an A or everybody gets a prize versus, you know, s- the reality that not all of us get a prize and some of us are good at this and some of some yeah. of us are good at this other thing and that there's mm-hmm. diversity and diversity of thought. Can yeah. you speak into that? Because you were a teacher and you you did speak into the kids' lives at Valor. Yeah. Well, and I think um, 
a big thing to remember is critical thinking. You know, right. just yeah. this, it's kind of gone out the window. It's like, right. here's what you should believe. Be inflamed if someone says otherwise. Right. Um, and something that I've come to the conclusion of uh, in wrestling and grappling, and I, I kind of mentioned earlier, I like to think about all these things. Is right. mm -hmm. Even in the, in the sense of Christianity, like if this is not true, I want to know it. Exactly. Um, right. But if I keep digging deeper, the more that I've just personally dug deeper, the more I found out there's like truth to this. Right. Um, but I think people would rather kind of be inflamed. Not everyone, but there's kind of this culture of be yeah. inflamed before you're like logically thinking through things. Right. Um, and it's like you either have blind faith or you believe in science. And, right. you know, that that theory has to be thrown out the window because they answer two different questions. And so I think critical thinking just in general should come back mm -hmm. um, and over this cancel culture. Uh, even seeing what people are saying about like history, like, oh, 200 years ago they did this and so cancel them. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you have to put everything in this context that we're not doing right. um, to be able to look at it objectively. So, But in the school system, and uh, sorry, Jamie, no, just no, no, real quick. Right in the mm -hmm. school system with Valor, it seems like you guys had a, a vision and a mission to teach your kids that, although it is countercultural, seems in other educational systems. Mm -hmm. And so that's great to hear that there are school systems that are uh, sticking to that with the Christian schools. And, mm -hmm. and so if, if you can, I mean, if I had kids i would want to put them through a christian school private school yeah, and or home school mm -hmm. so yeah and jamie what were you going to ask oh and i was just saying uh, what you were your last statement saying it sounds like just have common sense yeah you know just yeah <laughs> think about you know common sense isn't so common yeah. anymore it's no. like if a, if a stove is hot and it says don't touch well common sense says says i'm going to get burned why do you not want me to touch that? Because I'll get burned and it's going to hurt and then I have medical attention and so forth. So that's just common sense stuff. So my question also, Justin, is teaching at a Christian school, do you think that a lot of – it's just a little bit of what Rachel was going into, that the students that you've taught and they're probably now out in the world – that uh, because they've been some of that uh, not a part of that counterculture, that they will have more issues uh, than the kids that are in the world that are just accepting of everything. What do you think? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think sometimes in uh, a Christian school, too, there can be that danger of believe this and don't have conversations I feel like there's uh, an us versus them can, that can happen in both camps. Right. So I think there's importance to, uh, and this is something that I learned talking to kids. Like if you, um, obviously it's important to teach the Bible, but also says like there's going to be other things out there to mm -hmm. talk to people about. Right. Because if they get out into college and they're blindsided, like, oh, well, maybe that's right because all I've heard is this and yeah. now I'm hearing primarily this. Right. That's also an issue. So I think um, to be able to teach that core, like there's, there's a truth out there, find it, but you're going to face this. And like, how do you converse about that? Right. Uh, I think like the four bullet points of apologetics and that's it. And don't, you know, have a conversation. Like there's also that threat, that danger. Right. Absolutely. Um, so I think, yeah, critical thinking is important. Yeah. I, yeah. I think just saying like, if this is true, it's going to end up being true. Don't let one, you know, question topple your house of cards. Right. Like, be prepared. Yeah, and study. We always talk yeah. about recently, too, yeah. especially about creationism. Uh, it's my passion. Because mm. um, I went to CU Boulder, and I, I got great grades when I was studying evolution. I understand evolution. You know, great. But um, before I went to college, I was already trained up in critical thinking, and I already did the studying myself. Mm -hmm. So I could get into college, not be intimidated, and have a very – intellectual conversation with an evolutionist and talk about the facts and not yeah. be freaked out, you know? So I, with mm -hmm. kids, you, there is that level of training them up to be critical thinkers and mm -hmm. not to be afraid that, Hey, if you have a question, study it, research it, oh, yeah. Yeah. research your faith, research, um, creationism, research evolution, have, have an intelligent way to talk. And we don't always have to be right. around people who think alike. It's great to be around people who are opposite and be able to talk to them intellectually and have a reason for our faith. Right. So that's well, awesome. I, li I like the perspective of being able to converse with someone. When you get to the point where there is not, it's no longer a conversation. It's an argument. Then you got to walk away because yeah. it's like no one's gonna, no one's gonna win that. Which is like all social media nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> it's just all they want to do is <laughs> just yeah. argue. Yeah. Well, that uh, you know matters and this yeah. matters and it's like hey hey hey. Keep it down for a second right, there. I know. Yeah. Well, we, I promise we're going to get into the music, too, and talk about your music mm -hmm. career, Justin. We're going to listen to you right now, though, going through something. Quick um, quick comments on the song. 
Yeah, so this song um, came from, uh, there was a time a, a few years back where I had been going through about six years of severe um, medical issues, and then um, I started getting a little better, and then I dive-bombed again, and then it turned out I had uh, late-onset type 1 diabetes. I got a call three times in a row on a Sunday morning while I was in church and took it. They're like, you should be dead. We just oh, got your wow. we got your blood results. Like the pillar of health. I know. Well, really now, does. this was about five years ago. I was down to 130 pounds. I looked like Smeagol. Like, I was just... <laughs> Bad oh. shape. I'm sorry, uh, said Yeah, I just got that visual. sorry. <laughs> yeah, he stole it from us. I, I looked like <laughs> that, and it was pretty uh, unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, when people, well, I'm gonna stop you there. We're gonna listen oh, yeah. to the song first, and okay. then we're gonna yeah, let him continue. Gonna, like yes. we'll continue story. after the song. Mm -hmm. All right, here it is. something No one has this life all figured out Everybody's tired of feeling alone here I'm just desperate enough to shout it out Mercy was just a girl with the world on a string With straight A's and high praise Such a pure 17 until one day The birds and the bees change your history Pablo just lost his dad to the unnatural grave Now his hero is gone and it's his time to save Can he be what his family needs him to be? Sarah's husband is gone, now she's pushing back dead With a job and three keys, there's no time for regret In the land of the free, she just clings to survive John is back off the track, now he's high off his train As his friends and his family are praying for rain Looks like only a breakdown can lead to revival Everybody's gone Going for something No one has this life all figured out Everybody's tired of feeling alone here I'm just desperate enough to shout it out Fights with disease while he sings for the choir. All the voices around him say that he's admired for a strength that most days he trade to be well now. Sally Lou's at the church with a smile on her face. No one knows that she feels like she's falling from grace. They can't see all the demons making life hell now. Everybody's gone Going for something No one has this life all figured out Everybody's tired of feeling alone here I'm just desperate enough to shout it out and that was Going Through Something on Corner Cafe. And we have Justin Hooper in studio. Mm -hmm. And you were sharing, you're beginning to share the story of this song. And yes. like we said, Jamie and I are like, you're the pillar of health. Mm -hmm. and But you, you went through something. I did. So, um, yeah. So when I finally had this, uh, you know, diabetes result, and people started asking me, like, how are you doing? Usually my answer was kind of not to tell, like, I'm fine. Thanks. How are you? Yeah. Which is usually ours. And right. I'd finally gotten to the end of me with that last, like, kind of last straw of yeah. uh, these years of just struggling. Um, still, when I go back to California, people are like, are you okay? Like, they, they remember how long I struggled. Right. People out in Colorado, like, don't ask me because yeah. that was kind of we don't know the back mystery. when I lived in Exactly. Yeah. Um, 
but I started being honest with people about how I was actually doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, people started being honest back. Mm. Uh, yeah. they're like, Oh, actually, you know, my husband's going through this or yeah. I actually just thought. And so That's I was like, Oh wow. To be vulnerable. Like yeah. that. we should be yeah. like that more so. Yeah. Well, especially I think in the it's church. A testimony. Yeah. It's a great, it could be a great testimony. I'm sorry, Jesse, go ahead. Oh yeah. No. And I think in the church we put on that, I call it the Sunday smile. The facade. And, yeah. yeah. And, um, I think we need to be, uh, more open and vulnerable with yeah. each other. Um, because this song is a testament to that. So right. I collected all these people's stories that I grabbed coffee with and right. got the story stories from and uh i had like 20 verses i had to narrow it down so, <laughs> wow, so it's um, like an and, hour song yeah exactly um <laughs> had to yeah for obvious reasons narrow it down and yeah. uh, that's where the song came from um and it's been cool to see people really resonate with this song and we'll play it all over the place and it always sparks a conversation yeah. afterward uh, my wife and i went on a national tour uh, just the two of us um last year mm -hmm. and we were able to talk to people all across the country about like, oh, this is what I'm going yeah. through. And Isn't that what it's all about? It is. That it should yeah. be about um, worship and then mm -hmm. just our, our testimony and then our fellowship. Absolutely. Because you can't really have fellowship if everyone's just faking it, right? Right. How do you have mm -hmm. real fellowship if you're not getting deep into the issues and the heart and what you're struggling with and then the good things and the bad things? Why do you feel, Justin, that that is in our Christian culture? How, how has that... And of course, it's not in every church, but I would right. say, yeah, we could probably agree that there is some facade yeah. that we all we all go through. Is just just a human thing, or is this specifically to Christianity, or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I think that's a good question. Um, I think, um, and it isn't necessarily bad, but we do have kind of rock concert, motivational speech, and then go get lunch scenario. Right. I just read a book. <laughs> You're um, looking at your watch. When is lunch? Well, it yeah. depends on where we're going to lunch, too. It, it does. Lunch. It does. <laughs> Can't go to Chick-fil-A, obviously, on Sundays. But, That's true. Um, I think um, there was, I read a book, uh, I think it's called like John and Casper Go to Church, uh, where it was a, an outreach director and an atheist that went to the top 10 churches in the U.S., oh, and one of his big oh, questions wow. was, is this what Jesus asked you guys to do? And I thought that was a very good question because yeah. um, he was, was like, well, aren't you guys, what do you guys do to be Jesus? Because I know he went out and did good things for people. It's like, w yeah. when do you guys do that? Right. And um, I think that um, worship is really good, so is preaching, but I think we put have put so much emphasis on the stage right. and not collectively being the church right. the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. um, and I it's think like it's important show. to turn that around. Yeah. Very and I've been point. a worship leader, you know, for yeah. years. Um, and I think there's obviously value to it. But um, so the Simple Parade is the name of this music project. Sometimes it's me and a guitar. Sometimes it's my wife and I. Sometimes it's a full band. Yeah. Um, but we kind of made this uh, pact um, moving forward when the world does open up that we're going to go places Jesus would go. So, yes, we'll right. play at churches, yeah. but also... I mean, we were scheduled to play at a prison, right. uh, yeah. played at, you know, high school and, and places to encourage people yeah. and places that Jesus would also, you know, right. go. Um, so it just as a challenge to ourselves, like, ah, if this is truly Christian music, we should probably follow Christ and his modeling of it. Absolutely. Exactly. You know what? Now, Justin, I'm going to go back just a yeah. smidge because um, uh, forgive my ignorance on this because I want to let people know how serious the medical condition was because there are different types of diabetes. Oh yes. Uh, so I don't know. So I, that's why I say, forgive my ignorance. I don't know what the types are. And it's like, which is it type one, type two? Yes. Uh, so could yeah. You explain that if you don't mind and, and where you were at with that particular uh, disease at the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Um, so it was uh, late onset type one. So that's the genetic type. Okay. Uh, my great grandfather actually passed away. Because uh, it just means that your pancreas shuts down. Okay. Um, so he was actually 26, and he died. because 26 they, years old? Wow. Yes, because his pancreas died, and he didn't have, you know, I've got insulin with me. I've got <laughs> my... Right, right. And um, so they were able to catch it. But basically, your pancreas shuts down, you can't regulate blood sugars, and eventually, eventually your body, your whole body just shuts down. So oh, wow. I was on the off-the-chart status where I was just running on fumes and shutting down. That's why you're, you didn't have a lot of weight. Yeah. So I'd lost all my weight. Um, I had to like pee every five seconds. I had no energy. I was like 10% energy. I was just dragging. Um, and so I got a blood test and like, yep, you're. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, yeah. Did, did they say that something that was hereditary with you? Or? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah my great grandfather well, grandpa, yeah. and then my grandfather and then it skipped my dad. And then it. it oh, my gosh. Oh, okay. It's like four, four generations there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a generational thing. So. Oh, wow. So yeah. so back then when your grandpa, of course, was diagnosed, well, I don't know if he was considered diagnosed or whatever, because they didn't have the medi the, the, the medication. They don't have what they have now, yeah, right. to kind of counter it. Counter it, yeah. 
So he could have, you know, if they had they, he could if still they be had like, it. He could have lived. Yeah, you know, today twenty six years wow. old is really young. Yeah. So so you so type type two is that's like that's that's more that tends to be more the lifestyle one. Like you kind of you know because you're eating a lot of sugar. Right. And that's stuff. um. So yeah, type two is more the lifestyle, and this is a broad like broad, broad sweeping brush, thing. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Generally, type two is lifestyle, and type one is genetic. Right. So wow. Okay. So I'm glad I asked that question because I had no idea. Which, yeah. Most people know. don't. When you say yeah. diabetes, they're like, I don't know what that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so oh. I learned all about it. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, thank you for sharing that, really. Yeah. It's just educated me a smidge about yeah. it, a little bit, I know. So that's really good. So, because I wanted to let people know how, when he says, yeah, I was like, you know, I was almost out of here. You know, how, well, let's talk yeah, about how close you were. Yeah, I don't what think people mean? realize exactly. that diabetes can be so deadly. Yeah, because yeah. uh-huh. a, a, something that you need, an organ just shuts down. Yeah. And yeah. You have to catch it before the rest of your body does, too. Right. <laughs> well, it's, so. it's the difference between, you know, when I, they say, well, I got in a car accident a fender bender or it was a head on mm-hmm. you know that's those two are completely different they were yeah. the same thing but they were completely different in in, in their devastation right. so that's what you've explained to me that now that i understand yeah okay. and that's why i was so rattled you know when yeah. they're like you should be lying in a ditch somewhere i'm like well that's that's <laughs> rattling <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> and so right. yeah. which caused me to be more honest which you know i think god uses everything it absolutely started absolutely. this song that now you know gives people permission to now do you have children well, we've got one on the way. Oh, so, congrats. Yeah. Um, so it was funny. The Cats going, out of the bag if yep. anybody knows his family. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> yep. Sorry. No, she, my wife, uh, Kayla, is due in December. So oh, with our first. that's awesome. And your friend, John, John D. Wong, who's a friend of the cafe, who yes. introduced us. Mm-hmm. Um, him and his wife are expecting as well. So that'd be yeah. great for you guys as like a couple, you know. Yeah, well, you yeah. guys are good great. friends if you're having babies together. Yeah. Well, it was funny. I don't I don't know <laughs> if they'll appreciate me saying this, uh, but oh. it was like <laughs> uh, Kayla and I told them, it's like, we're pregnant. They're like, oh, maybe we should start trying. And then two weeks later, like, we're pregnant. Like, oh, all right. right. So <laughs> we started the trend. The kids yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ought to trick them and say, hey, we're multimillionaires. Yeah. And then it says, hey, guess what? We're multimillionaires. We're not. Great. That's now you can one. give us money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since you're following us. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. I well, congratulations to all of you Thank guys. You. That's amazing. Yeah, we're pretty excited about it. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's it's just great with your diabetes and stuff, how the Lord matured you and then um, sparked these songs. Mm-hmm. And just be deeper in your mm-hmm. faith, more real, more vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have another story of either someone who heard your music or just a friend or a family member talking about this. Yeah. Well, um, so this album that we just put out, uh, Seeker, um, Mm -hmm. this going through something song was actually the spark of it. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Alpha Course, um, but it's a, a course that churches have used over the last 30 years um, where they tackle like the huge concepts of like, what is evil? Mm-hmm. You know, is there more to life than this? Why did Jesus die? Like these big questions yeah. that not everyone knows the answers to, even people who've gone to church for 30 years. Right. Um, and so my wife and I helped um, with uh, Alpha, and this album is actually trying to explain to non-believers what the Christian faith is great. about. What a great so, outreach. Yeah. yeah, so we follow in order with this album those oh, questions really asked cool. in Alpha. Nice. And it's nice. once again like Seeker? That. Yes, so yeah. it's called Seeker for a reason because yeah. often we, we divide like, okay, you're a seeker, you're a believer, but technically everyone believes something and everyone is seeking something. Absolutely. Right. So it's kind of bringing those walls down and yeah. kind of that vulnerability of, I wrestle with this stuff too. Right. Um, so, yeah. Very great, good. great conversation, yes. great music. Hey, we're going to go to a break. We'll be back, though, with more music. KLDC, 1220 AM. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5.25. Welcome back to Corner Cafe. We've been having a great conversation with Justin Hooper, and we're going to listen to one of another one of his songs. Here is "Do You Know His Name." Here it is. There's a man up ahead, a teenage girl conceived him. This small town kid with vision. A perfect, humble son There's a man up ahead He left a safe profession Got baptized in the Jordan To preach the kingdom come Speaks 
Do You Know His Name on Corner Cafe. And Justin Hooper is our featured guest, of course. We love your last name, Hooper. <laughs> Hoop. Jay Hoop. Jay Hoop. Yes. He does not play basketball, ladies and gentlemen. No. Nope. He's, he's, he's soccer. soccer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Missed opportunity. Yeah, right. You could still get into basketball. I okay. could. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess I could. But that it jump just... shot's not any good, J- Justin. I don't know. Well, I've got some hops. I did long jump and high jump oh, in okay. high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, yeah. see, you didn't ex- you didn't tell us that. Now we <laughs> that's where the hooper comes in, the hoop yep. portion. Okay, that makes sense. So it's appropriate. It is appropriate. Mm-hmm. And then you were saying that you had a, a good question for Justin. Yeah, I was going to make a statement in regards to Justin's music. I love I love the way you write. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you it's it's not surfacy. Right. Uh, it's it's very it's like it it's it's you make statements in your songs. And and you pose questions to the listener where it makes them like we were discussing earlier. It makes them think about what they're listening to. Why is this portion in the song? That's interesting. So this is going on uh, this, when I hear it. That's what I'm, th- I'm thinking. I go, OK, wow, I never thought of that. OK, hmm. well, what does that mean? So but so you're, you're telling a story, at, but at the same time, you're asking questions to make people uh, understand what they're challenging their faith is the best way I could say it. You're challenging yeah. their faith to say, hey, okay, okay, listen, you're here. God wants you over here. Now, how this? I'm showing you a little roadmap how to get there. And at the same time, with that roadmap, there are a lot of questions that you need. You can ask and answer along yeah. the journey. That's what I love about your write, writing, Justin. No, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Um, so I was mentioning earlier the Alpha Course. Uh, yeah. They really. Um, push how many questions Jesus asked mm-hmm. and how many he didn't answer. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so, why? Why didn't and he do why? that? Exactly. He think, right? Yeah, because mm-hmm. um, it's like, Good. and telling stories. So we actually, um, uh, with this new project, we came up with a new mission statement mm-hmm. of uh, tell stories, ask questions, and love beyond yourself. Mm-hmm. Because those are the three concepts um, that we kind of found continually in the Gospels. Like a third of the Gospels are him telling stories. Right. He asked like 300 questions and was asked uh, around 200 and only answered three <laughs> directly, right. uh, which is very frustrating, um, but also really good because it forces you to make, uh, I think, the journey relational because right. you're always having a conversation. Right. Uh, I like how you said that. Also very frustrating, if you can imagine. I mean, he is our friend, right? Yeah. The Lord. And once we know him, he's also our Lord. But just to be around Jesus, where you would ask a question and you wouldn't maybe necessarily get the answer you were hoping in. Yeah. That's interesting. I hadn't hadn't thought of that before. Yeah. Or they ask a question and he's like, okay, there's a story about a man. I was like, oh my gosh, here comes a story. (laughs) So can you just answer my question? (laughs) Just be direct, please. (laughs) Do you think, Justin, when uh, the questions that Jesus didn't ask is because he was looking at them like, hmm, or the majority of us, if not all of us, and saying, there are questions I can answer, but there are questions I won't answer because it's a journey that you'll have to discover along the way. Because if you don't seek me, then you won't find the answers that you're looking for that are deep hidden inside that, that that will only be revealed through time and the journey. So that's yeah. the reason why. So maybe, some, what do you think? Do you, maybe some of the reason why he did not ans- ask, answer all those questions. Oh, absolutely. And um, I know we played Do You Know His Name, but there's another song called Park Bench that I've wrecked some people with accidentally when I played him because <laughs> uh, it's it came at a low point for me, like one of the deepest valleys I was in yeah. uh, for uh, a multitude of reasons. And I was sitting on a park bench just kind of almost cussing God out. I'm like, what the are you yeah. doing mm-hmm. so that song is a bunch of tough questions that i asked yeah. god and then at the end of it i was kind of 
like <laughs> just getting, you know, just coming down right. and it clicked for me. And I looked up into the uh, night sky and I said, oh, you just wanted me to talk to you about this. Oh, God, that's good. oh how sweet. That's and good. then when I came to that, I heard this still small voice that said, well done, you're on to your next chapter. I wasn't told what the chapter was. I wasn't given many answers to the questions that I just threw at him. Right. But I had had this piece of like, OK, I got it out. I realized that it's the dialogue that he wants right. and it wouldn't happen if I had been given all the bullet points. Right. Right. And so, um, yeah. So that song was another one of those deep kind of me personally asking God questions. I uh, love that mm -hmm. because that's the thing though. And we can encourage our listeners too. We don't always have to go to the Lord in like complete joyous mode, you know, no. a lot of the, that's not real, right. In real right. relationships, especially it's not everyday life. Yeah. Everyday yeah. life. Yeah. So to, to go to him, and like you said, you're kind of like in a cuss out mode, if you will, <laughs> yeah. to the Lord and being like, hey, what's, what's, what's going on? You know, mm -hmm. um, just be real with him. We don't have to hide. I think sometimes we can think that we need to hide what we're really thinking. He already knows anyways. He already right. knows that we're angry. You might as well just, you know, talk to him about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, I don't know, I, I feel like a lot of... Um, people are sitting in the pews in quiet desperation and that doesn't need to be the case. Right. You know, you read, uh, the Psalms, a third of them are lament and he was yes. a man after God's own heart. Yeah. So, and Job, I mean, right. <laughs> right. There, there's a lot of Ecclesia, like there's a lot of that in the Bible, people wrestling with God. That's what Israel means. Right. And I think we don't give ourselves enough opportunity to do that. And when we do, I think it really does do like my wife and I have seen some rough stuff already, uh, in our, in our marriage. And we've gone through a lot of tough things together, but our relationship is so strong now. That's awesome. Right. Because of that. Right. Um, and I think, you know, I wouldn't trade it uh, or, yeah, I wouldn't trade it, but I also wouldn't like to go through it again. Right. Right. But I do see the value of those valleys mm -hmm. um, because those questions we ask together as a couple um, and just what it's brought us to the, on the, on the other side. And I think the same is true with our faith, too, and our right. relationship with Jesus is it's, you know... Um, yeah, through those trials. Well, say. I think when you mentioned about marriage and then when you go through things, uh, if you just don't avoid them, but you go through them, it, it matures you and yes. makes you makes you both stronger and your relationship greater. Um, we were talking about uh, everyday life and like like David, uh, a man after, being after man, a man after God's own heart. He had a lot of troubles as well as being king. Uh, I had season passes for several years when I lived in California and uh, at Disneyland and even though it's the happiest place on earth, sometimes I was, wasn't always happy to be there. I'm like, man, these people are driving me nuts. It's <laughs> hot out here. And, you know, these lines are long. So even being at the, the, the quote unquote happiest place on the earth does not always mean that you're going to be happy. Uh, that's why when we go through the journey, when we're living as Christians, it's not always, it's the, it's the, it's the most hopeful, happiest uh, book in the world because it's the living word. It's just not a book. It's the living right. word. So with that being said, it's, you know, we have, we have our hope and our joy in there, but we have to dig in and get out of it what's supposed to be in there for us that keeps us on the journey and mature. Right. Yeah. And I think you realize that the Bible, again, I like history. So I do too. I like reading it as a history book mm -hmm. and just kind of people grappling with God and not getting the full answer all along the way. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's, you know, um, just like by faith, these people did this because they were given this assignment, but they had no idea when it would be fulfilled, mm -hmm. right. what it was going to look like. Yeah. And that's the whole story. Mm -hmm. right. And um, that's kind of a bittersweet. Right? You get a <laughs> promise and then like. 25 years go by <laughs> right. sitting in prison. You're like, what? <laughs> you know? oh, that's horrible. Yeah. And <laughs> so there's encouragement and I think discouragement in yeah. that. Um, right. And so, yeah, I think those people think like, oh, it's just a list of rules that I'd rather not follow. When they view the, the Bible that way, uh, I was like, read it again. Right. Uh, and like the Bible project's been, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Bible project, but it's been really cool. They kind of sum up and tell the history of everything. I've been kind of nerding out on that. But when you realize it's just this arc of humanity in relationship to God, mm -hmm. um, and then that Jesus is the exclamation point at the end of the sentence, um, right. it's, it's, I don't know, it makes it really cool. Yeah. You're like, oh, these people wrestled as well. Okay. I'm not the only one. Right. And then you look around and you realize, oh, these people are wrestling too. I'm not the only one. And there's, yeah. there's right. something shared in the joy of 
going through the valley together right. and then yeah. always the having struggle. that hope at the end. Right. Very good. Absolutely. I yeah. love the way Very you said good. that, Justin. Mm-hmm. This is great. So how do our listeners get a hold of you, your music? Yeah. Um, so you guys can listen to We just released the album a couple weeks ago, um, Seeker. And uh, so you can listen to it streaming anywhere. Um, again, uh, the project name is The Simple Parade. So that's the band name. Uh, and you'll Why see. Why did you name your band that? Just curious. That is a good question. Um, so the first song we put out uh, is called Confetti. And one of the um, lines in that song is, enjoy the simple thrills of your parade. And that's something that I always forget to do. I'm always looking ahead yeah, or regretting right. what's behind. Right. And so it was Not writ- living in the present. Right. Mm-hmm. So it was a, it was, the song was written as a reminder to myself, who often struggled to just be present, yeah. to be present, right. and to enjoy the journey, even in the valleys. So that song uh, was a reminder to myself, so I figured I might as well make the project name a reminder to myself yeah. and to everyone uh, that we, you know, we're in this together. And a parade is not with just one person, right. but it's everyone playing their parts. Yeah. Very um, good. So, very yeah. creative. Like very that. poetic. Thank you. So you can get your music anywhere, even yes. on Facebook, um, mm-hmm. SoundCloud, and yeah. Every, so just look up huh? the Simple Parade, and then um, we're actually going to be doing a Unity concert uh, at Brave Church on November twentieth. Oh, um, nice. So we're going to start announcing that. This is actually the first official place I've announced it. So oh, wouldn't now, well, awesome. <laughs> Lucky us. November, yeah. November 20th. November correct? 20th. The goal is to get um, us, as we call it, quote unquote, musicianary types yeah. who are Christians who want to play music out mm-hmm. in the world mm-hmm. to kind of give people hope. Uh, so we're going to be uh, uniting a few of those types of bands and Great. doing that kind of thing. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely, S- definitely send check us that them information out. Yes, and we yes, definitely will. Announce that again. Yeah, we will. We'll put it on our Facebook page what yeah. we'll do. And listeners, definitely check them out. Um, get his music, support him. Justin, thank you so much. We'll have you back on the Corner Cafe. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we're going to go to a break. We'll be back, though, with the second half. I love coffee. I love tea. I love the Jabba Jive and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the Jabba and me. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. Bye. Welcome back to Corner Cafe. This is the second half. More music. Variety. Yay. Nicole always does a good job picking our songs. Nicole, what's up first? First up on the menu, we've got Never Alone by Transform, Let Them Rise by Holy Mountain, and Trust in You by Higher Vision.
eyes, let them rise. Let our praises rise to you. We're gonna worship something. You're the only one that's true. Lift our eyes, lift our eyes. We will lift our eyes to you. We all look up to someone. You're the only one that's true. We have built ourselves an idol of things that we can see. All that glitter made us bitter, never set us free. Oh no, we've departed, stubborn-hearted, falling far from you. But loving kindness always finds us. You make broken new. You make us new. Let them rise, let them rise. Let our praises rise to you. We're gonna worship something. You're the only one that's true. Lift our eyes, lift our eyes. We will lift our eyes to you. We all look up to someone. You're the only one that's true. Hallelujah. 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 You're the only one that's true. Let them rise. Let our praises rise to you. We're gonna worship something. You're the only one that's true. Lift our eyes, lift our eyes. We will lift our eyes to you. We all look up to someone. You're the only one that's true. Hallelujah. 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 You're the only one that's true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Friday here on Corner Cafe. We're going to go to a, mm. a break. And then after the break is, what is it, Jamie? The tip of the week? Tip of the week. Nicole. K- Stay tuned. The journey to salvation starts with his truth. Uplifting Christian Talk, KLDC 1220. We see just a phenomenal favor and it almost like we've been building the plane as we're flying lately. But at this juncture, we see God just bringing clarity to vision. Partnering with others to saturate cities with the gospel message is a powerful thing. And for Dave Bidell, the vision to saturate New York City has been very motivating. Hi, I'm Steve Douglas for Making Your Life Count. And Dave says that vision is spreading it's Christ saturation, prayer saturation, city saturation, and 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 if if you know again if if in New York City, a city of 10 million, we only need 1,500 churches, a critical mass of 1,500 churches to operate in strategic unity, adopting 2,000 homes apiece to see an entire city covered with the knowledge of Jesus, to see no sheep without a shepherd in our city, to see schools adopted. So we see God God moving in a way beyond what we've ever dreamed possible and this has been a short period of time you know since since we we started in about 15 so we see just a phenomenal favor and it almost like we've been building the plane as we're flying lately but at this juncture we see God just bringing clarity to vision the saturate USA movement is bringing the message of Jesus Christ to millions of homes nationwide we have a you know we have a saturate um playbook that we would love to share with anyone who's interested and to say, hey, I'm, I'm curious. So we, w- we would love to help and encourage um, any city to come together in any way, whatever we can do to help. You know, we, we're so excited about the opportunity God has given us to really uh, saturate our nation and our world now with the gospel. Wow, such an amazing vision. Do you want to learn how you can get involved in telling people about Jesus right where you live? Go to makingyourlifecount.com and click on Saturate USA. God's wisdom produces behavior that is morally pure, chaste, and modest. God's wisdom produces relationship, not estrangement. God's wisdom does not demand its own way, but rather functions by influence. God's wisdom is not rooted in pride, but rather in service. God's wisdom is marked by kindness, generosity, and helpfulness. The wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy, James 3.17. This is taken from God's Way Day by Day by Charles Stanley. 
Welcome back to Corner Cafe, and this is the tip of the week. Nicole, what's our tip? All right, tip of the week time. So next week we have a big one coming up. Jamie Atlas is going to be on again, and we're going to get a good tip from him. But this week I have a pretty simple tip. Well, I mean, I guess 10 tips, but we're going to talk about this Halloween. How are we going to stay safe with trick-or-treating? So I've got a few tips. So number one ditch the candy bowl i know a lot of people have like seen different options and whatnot but quite possibly the most important thing that you can do is skip the communal candy bowl this year so whether you usually hand out candy from the bowl or just you know let the kiddos dig in and grab their favorites this year it's just too tricky for trick-or-treaters to really that's going to spread a lot of germs that's pretty pretty obvious So a candy bowl itself cannot be contact free. So what's the alternative? And that brings to tip number two. Uh, You could do a grab and go setup. And really this this is kind of one of the areas where you have the opportunity to get creative with uh, trick-or-treating this year so you can set up a table and decorate it you know if you're wanting to and you can place like the wrapped candy on the table individually and then allow the kids to like come up and pick out their favorites without touching any of the other pieces you know if you have the time or resources you can create like small little wrapped goodie bags and encourage the trick-or-treaters to just take one of those each i wouldn't recommend anything like homemade popcorn balls or caramel apples or anything like that this year but you know you can put the individual candies in the in the little bags and do that for them i've seen people are taking like um pvc pipe and creating like slides where you could shoot the candy down to um down to the trick-or-treaters like i said this is really the area that you could start to get creative so um keep it clean if you're setting up a table for candy No reason you can't put like a bottle of hand sanitizer right there, you know, or Lysol wipes or something, or, you know, sanitizing wipes or something like that, just right there and like just kind of help the kids remind them, you know, hey, kill germs. This is a good thing. Um, All right, tip number four forget the front door. So having the kids come to your front door to get the candy is gonna make social distancing really tough. So the safer bet is to stay outside while you're doing your trick or treating hours. You know, keep your fingers crossed for good weather. Uh, But this way you can greet your neighbors safely uh, from a distance and you can still give them their candy and have your table display. And like I said, this is kind of one of the areas, I kind of like the idea of that. You know, we don't, We don't get out of the house and communicate with our neighbors anyway. So, you know, this is a good time to do it. And, you know, reason number five, mask up. Halloween was tailor-made for masks. So, you know, if it's part of your costume, that makes it super easy. Like, I have a feeling there's possibly going to be a lot of ninjas this year. Um, There are hundreds of different themes of costumes that that your kids can do for trick-or-treating where they're going to have masks on, grown-ups that are standing outside in trick-or-treating. It gives us a minute that we can dress up a little and put our masks on too. So, you know, or you could also just, if you have like a paper medical mask, you can also just color that and do something to make it fun. Tip number six, keep it local. While the goal most years is to like hit as many houses as you possibly can and like really stuff your bag full of candy, this year it might be your best bet to just stay closer to home. Like if you've developed a little pod or a bubble of close friends and family members, sticking with visiting those homes is probably a smart idea. All right, tip number seven stay small you know and this goes to another aspects of groups i know when my kids would go out trick-or-treating it was a a goal of let's see how many kids in the neighborhood we can get together and then all those kids had their family with them and whatnot but this year if your kids are venturing out into the neighborhood try to keep the groups small i mean not too small battle buddies are important but maybe you usually head out with a bunch of neighbors but this year maybe think about keeping it to just one other family member and you know not 50 kids at one time and just kind of try to keep it smaller if you're still hesitant about trick-or-treating one of the things you can do is you could decorate more and celebrate at home if trick-or-treating is you know too risky for your family and whatnot 
you, you could just make it funner and kind of have alternatives. You know, put up some more decorations, turn some Halloween movies or music on, and, you know, really let the good times roll in your own little haunted house. You know, maybe you guys as a family could hand out candy and you're not out with a group of people. You know, there's lots of ways that you can make that fun. All right, and the last tip that I have for you, probably the most important tip, is do whatever works for for your family. The bottom line is there is no one right way to do this. Like this is, nobody has set any precedent anywhere on how to handle trick or treating during a pandemic. So, and you know, we all have our different opinions and different views on what the virus is and how dangerous and how it spreads and whatnot. We all have a different opinion, but keep other people in mind. But again, the bottom line, you got to do what's right for your family and there's no right way to do this. So as long as you stick to like the three main rules, maintain social distancing, wear a mask and keep your hands clean. The rest is really up to you and your family and neighbors. Just don't think that just because we're in a pandemic means you've got to cut all the fun off for the kids. I mean, yeah, I'm a grown up. I don't celebrate Halloween myself anymore. I don't care. It's just another season changing. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful God gives us all of those. But my kids, they like to dress up in costumes and go get candy. I don't think it has anything to do with the holiday. I think I could send them out in the middle of April with costumes and they'd go get candy. So anyway, there is your tip of the week. Thanks for the tip of the week, Nicole. Hey, we have more music here. Turn them lights to down low and low and crank the volume, let go and go and raise them to the roof, blowing. Right here, right now, we own it. Ah, too high, let the coat drop. Going up, no levels of below top. Top, already know what. We ain't here for crew, rolling like a mom cop. Kuna Matata, yelling it out like ain't worried about nada. nada. Ain't holding on to no problems, I be so gone to the drama. No stress and rocking the laid back expression. These haters stay cold while they polar expressing. I told you I changed, don't know what you expecting. Don't like it, respect it, and let's just forget it, huh? Turn it up when some like blah, blah, blah. Kill that top, ain't nothing but blah, blah, blah. We're going off. Now y'all chill, we be all right. All right. Y'all lay back, we be all right. All right. Now relax, we be all right. All right. Let that music play all night. Like, da, 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 da. Let that music play all night like la da 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 la da 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 la da 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 let that music play all night gon' do it get loose now gon' lose it I'll let the moon like you would now no stop or prove you's a true rocker muse move you too groove like boom shaka lock a loft a helicopter soon gotcha gotcha like you wanna loose up kick your new shoes up turn the music up to bump and bobby head a little let go feel the bass down low while you're stressed now no we know we gotta live a little go la da 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 I been there in a whole lot of this and that and gab and chat let it all go now where the music at yeah turn it up when some like la da da Kill that top, ain't nothing but blah blah blah. We're going off. Now y'all chill, we be all right. All right. Y'all lay back, we be all right. All right. Now relax, we be all right. All right. Let that music play all night. Like la da 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 da, la da 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 da, la da 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 da. Let that music play all night. Like la da 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 da, la da 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 da, la da 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 da. Let that music play all night. Gon' do it. Get loose now. Gonna lose it. I'll let the moon like you would now. Now hold on. This song isn't for everyone. Nah, I'm just playing. Everybody get gone. Go. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. La da 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 da.
music on the second half. We got tons of great music for you. Mm-hmm. Hey, if you hear a song and it's your favorite, let us know. Right. Reach out to us, cornercaferadio.com, mm-hmm. or if you want to suggest an artist for the show, cornercaferadio.com. We're going to go to a break. Next is our weekly special. Healing through the grace of his word, KLDC 1220, and on the web at KLDC1220.com. A new way to see an old story. I am Michael Olson with your Bible question of the day. You can earn a substantial income by farming for the city. All you need to do is take your crop to market and win the competition for the consumer dollars. There is a well-proven strategy for winning this competition. You will find it embedded in Metro Farm, the guide to growing in or near the city for the city. New Farms, Bob Hofstetter. Metro Farm is filled with marketing and business management basics that entertain and enlighten. Case studies show how successful Metro Farmers persist and prosper. Cheese maker Todd Shriver. Metro Farm is a well-researched one-stop guide to the business of small acreage farming. There is so much to this book I've found helpful. Engineer S.M. Smith. Metro Farm's business information alone is more informative and helpful than most books that specialize in business. Get this book. You will not be disappointed. Before you plant your seeds, pick up a copy of the Ben Franklin Book of the Year award-winning Metro Farm. Then plant your seeds and win the dollars. MetroFarm.com. MetroFarm.com. Kentucky's Ark Encounter now offers visitors a new way to experience the story of Noah's Ark. Visitors wear high-tech glasses and ride a special chairlift through the story of Noah's Ark with all the sights, sounds, and even smells of actually being there. Genesis 8, 13. By the first day of the first month of Noah's six hundred and first year, the water had dried up from the earth. Question. Do you think Kentucky's Noah's Ark encounter would or would not be a commercial success in Hollywood? Join us. Answer today's question and learn how yesterday's question was answered. Log on to 1220kldc.com. Worship Life Ministries just released an initiative called the Christian Musician Relief Fund, which is providing grants for Christian music artists affected by COVID-19. We need your help to fund these grants. For the price of a cup of coffee, you can make a difference. And if you're a Christian music artist in need of help, we want you to know that we are here for you. Simply click to apply for a grant or to donate to the grant fund at worshiplive.com. That's worshiplive.com. Thank you. Welcome back to Corner Cafe, and this is the weekly special. And listeners, I want to tell you about, this is the Lord working, right? You like a special. Special. (laughs) I didn't think you were going to catch that. You said that, this is our weekly special, and I go, special. Yeah, it's like. And you heard that. So I started laughing. I was like, she she totally didn't hear it. And then you looked at me, I said, yeah, she did. You know how (laughs) Justin mentioned that uh, he looks like the Lord of the Rings. uh, Uh, Schmeagle? Yeah, Schmeagle. He reminds me of Schmeagle. (laughs) Special. Special. Like the three ring, you know? Special. Yeah, the special. What did he call it? My precious. No, he called it his precious. Precious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Precious. Special. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, but just this is super cool. This is a God moment. So yeah. today, usually something comes in my head about, hey, what am I going to share with creationism and, you mm-hmm. know, giving honor to the Lord about the creation. We've shared yes. about the sun and the moon. We've mm-hmm. shared about molecular biology. We've mm-hmm. shared about the baby in the womb. We'll continue to share those stories off the top of the show. But and today... And those, those, those items that we're sharing, yeah. uh, a lot of that's on our, uh, on website, our website, cornercaferadio.com or cornercaferadio.com. Yeah, and cornercaferadio.com, just go to um, mm-hmm. God's Artistry. But yeah. today, nothing came to me. Mm-hmm. And so, and I really felt like we needed to talk about Revelation being in the last days yep. and all that. Well... Little did I know that Jamie gets this flyer at, in his house, at his house. Uh-huh. And for some reason, Jamie, tell our listeners why you brought it. Because it's random that you would bring this to our show. It, I know. It was so weird. Um, like you said, we've been talking about this stuff before. And this came in the mail to me at my home probably about three to four days ago. 
and uh, I was getting ready to head out the door. Uh, I was late, of course. <laughs> um, I was and, actually the one late to studio today. Okay, so I was early. Rachel was late. Let's keep that. Let's. Uh, <laughs> I'll let's, be honest. Let's tally that. I had to get uh, <laughs> gas on the way here. That's my excuse. <laughs> and so, uh, and I was getting ready to head out the door, and I had this on my ta- my kitchen table, and I said, I'm going to take this to show Rachel. This is incredible. It's a it's it's like a road map to you know for um, the journey of. Of the those, last days, last days kind yeah. of thing it has all to do with Revelation. Maybe so, we should take a photo of it. Yeah, that's and put it on our Facebook page. Well, I want to make sure that all the it's all scripturally correct too. I don't want to throw anybody. <laughs> that's true. Let's make I sure it's anybody. scripturally but, correct. But but it seems so far it seems like it's you know it's it's uh, you know everything is in order. So anyway, I was walking out the door and then I and I was walking. I go, oh man, yeah, I feel like I'm forgetting something. And then I turn around and I look and I go, oh yeah that flyer and so I grabbed it and put it in my bag uh, not even realizing we were going to be talking about this today and 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 we talked about this earlier at the top of the show but uh, what I failed to mention also was on this particular flyer uh, you ever go to the mall and uh, and you're looking for let's say you're probably going to be looking for uh, I'm going to throw you under the bus on those one Rachel uh, a boutique for nails and hair and all stuff well, so, if I go to the mall it's mostly clothes okay. actually I save money <laughs> on not doing nails the reason uh-huh. I don't do my nails is because I play guitar listen everybody Rachel's so, giving you some tips here I, uh, But and actually this is funny too I had not had a haircut in two years. I saw that. I saw that post you put on Facebook. It looks great. Um, And prior to that, it was like Mm -hmm. a year and a half too, because I can just go with not doing my hair for a while. Because I don't, I don't blow dry. Mm -hmm. I don't color. Well, your hair is so curly. Um, You know, when it it curls, you can't tell how sometimes how long your your hair really. Yeah, exactly. Unless you straighten it, then it's like really long. Right. So, and I and I like to wear it straight every so often. It it takes forever. Yeah. I just. Basically, wear it curly out of the shower, don't blow dry it. And so uh-huh. I have that hairstyle. I don't need to go to the salon a lot. But I went recently, and I loved it, of course. Well, most women um, would love to be able to do what you do, just be able to get out of the shower and just, you're done. You I know? do feel blessed with that. Yeah. Yes. You know, well, Nadine, you know how I feel. <laughs> right. I pre- pretty much, you see my hair today, I, I pre- pretty much do the same thing. Right. And then you put something in it to make it stick up like that. Right? No, or does it just stick up naturally? No, like that's that? all the joy of the Lord. My hair is my <laughs> hair is happy. What are you talking about? It is happy. Don't take hair. the don't take the joy of the Lord out of my hair, sister. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, I know you put something in that. I put a little uh, little gel. Yeah. A little in a smidge of hair. We spray. love Jamie's hair here. And a lot of joy of the Lord. Right. <laughs> but anyway, so so what I was what I was saying is going back to the mall concept and we got into your beauty uh yes, beauty Rachel's beauty solutions. Um uh, where you're looking for that particular boutique or you know clothing or whatever, a nail salon, and it has that sign, the directory where it says you are here. Mm-hmm. Well, this flyer has you are here. Oh, I love that. Like uh, like you missed it and now you're here, right. kind of thing. So now you're going to go through the treaty of Daniel nine twenty seven. Right. The Antichrist the, making the treaty with uh-huh. Israel. So that's a three point, and it has right here three point five years. Now it has in big letters seven years that through the whole tribulation, but mm-hmm. it breaks it in half because the scripture talks about that that he will break that treaty in three and a half about three and a half years, right. and it says three point five years, and then it, and then in the middle of it it says treachery, which is Daniel nine twenty seven, Matthew twenty four fifteen through twenty two. So it gives this. This entire, you know, and just this little flyer is pretty remarkable. And you, you just flip it over and this, and all the information is there. So we had been talking about this and this is the journey of, you know, and then at, at the end it says, you know, triumph, Revelations 19, 11 through 21, uh, and then Revelations 24 through 6, world peace. So it's pretty incredible. It, it threw me off because when I'm telling, explaining all the, and you tell Jamie, get to the point. <laughs> when I was talking about, I said, there's a volcano, there's a spaceship, there's some, some, looks like some snow. I don't know what that is. And then there's the Jewish there's a Jewish temple and I go oh these are all the symbols of a lot of the things that are going that will be going on or have gone on and it has scripture reference for all those items and I said that's pretty re- and remarkable yeah you know yeah it's just a time listeners and for Jamie and I to not that we have all the answers of the end days you know I have but, all the answers well, what are you talking Jamie about? does of course call but... me at 1-800-447-1 <laughs> billion and uh extension chocolate <laughs> Right. Um, <laughs> but it's just a time for the ble- for us as believers yeah. to read the Bible. Of course, we Absolutely. should be reading it anyways, but mm-hmm. re- really get serious about it. And Revelation actually says the person who reads this will be blessed. Yes. So mm-hmm. we encourage you to read Revelations. Uh, find a good pastor who, mm-hmm. you, who you feel is 
knows how to really teach it and go through it because it can be confusing. Absolutely. Um, and, and this is why a lot of people would do like uh, cell groups or study groups yeah. or Bible studies that uh, that could help break it down for anyone. Please just don't don't go to people like David Koresh or uh, Jim Jones. <laughs> just remember, uh, no one knows the day or the hour the Lord is going to come. Hell, Not even the Lord knows. <laughs> right. And Hell, I, Bob Comet and right. all of these c- crazy wacko groups. Right. You know, keep it, keep it, keep it real, people. And mm-hmm. I mentioned in the beginning of the show um, that even, you know, in Jewish tradition, mm-hmm. only the father knew when his son could go get his bride. Right. And just the same way, Jesus doesn't know the father is going to tell him, okay, go get your bride. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, I bet you Jesus knows now. Yeah, well, you know, well, remember he yeah. was he was on when he was on the earth, you know. Right, right. But I, I don't he know. probably I think he, he I think he'd know now. Do you think he knows now? Or is he right still waiting for God to say, "Hey, go"? Because I'd hate he... for God to have to go in there and wake him up and say, "Hey, <laughs> it's time, let's get going." I'm sure he's not sleeping. But I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> questions to all this, right? Right. right. But um, let's just do our due diligence and study the word. Absolutely. Um, Jamie and I believe in the pre. Trib rapture, mm-hmm. um, but there I have a lot of friends who, are, who have different opinions on that. So, and, and you were saying that's okay. We're not, right. you know, we're not damning you to hell or anything for that. <laughs> we're, we're, no. we're, what we are saying is that you know, just be ready. Right. You know, you know, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And if you receive Him as your Lord and Savior, you know, then you're 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 getting ready. Right. You're you're preparing. Right. You know. Jamie, how would you talk to your friend who's not a believer if you had that flyer in front of you? You're at coffee. You're talking to him. How, what would you say? Because we may have a listener right now who mm-hmm. who doesn't know, hasn't yet put their faith in the Lord. I would uh, give him this flyer and I'd say, see you later. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. Um, well, if I was gone, I would be saying, see you later. Uh, I would be. I would say, you know what? Uh, have you ever received uh, Jesus in your life, you know, as your Lord and Savior? And if they said no, and I say, well, you know what? Can I can I just give you some information? Just kind of explain that how you know how he died for us, why he died for us, and why he loves us so much, no matter what we've done, and how how crazy and callous and evil and mean that we've been. That's 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 not our nature. Our nature is to be like him. So let me explain that to you according to John three sixteen. How why he loved us so much, and then I'll just uh, basically go through scripture uh, through the word, and I would paraphrase because I, I you know if they're an unbeliever, they're not going to know all the scripture. So I just paraphrase and say, you know what, he loves you. He died for you, and this is how you get to him. Just repent for all your sins. Ask him to come into your heart. And if he comes into your heart and you've repented for all your sins, now you are a believer. You know, find a church. Find someone um, that you can ex- exclaim that to, explain that to, and say, hey, look, I've just gotten saved. You know, Jesus is the Lord of my life, and it doesn't matter what I did yesterday. It's what I do from this point on. He remembers my sins as like east is to the west. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so now— I just want to get with other believers, learn, grow, and mature, and be in Christ. And if you've prayed anything that remotely close to that, well, not close, but you've prayed that prayer because there's only one way, right. then you're, you, you're a believer. You're, that's what it takes to be a believer. It's that simple. I explained that within, what, 13, 14 seconds? Mm-hmm. So, you know, tell somebody, hey, I just got saved. I heard, an, I heard a, the, you know, a quick prayer on a corner cafe, and, you know, now I'm telling you, uh, what should I do from here? And then now you've got your marching instructions. Mm-hmm. Right. And for believers, it's a good time to go to coffee. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I know that we've all been in quarantine, but now we can, you know, things are opening up as far as I can see. Mm -hmm. Um, And hopefully we'll stay that way. But get together with um, your close friends, family members who don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Maybe a good intro conversation is to talk about, you know, all the things that are going on that are scary and what the Bible says about it and what Revelation says. Mm -hmm. And hey, after having that conversation, invite them to know the Lord. So Absolutely. we encourage you saints. Um, I believe the time is near and Jamie does too. And yep. of course we don't know the day or the hour, but now's the time to evangelize and really uh, have our relationship the, with the Lord front and center in our lives. So, Hey, Amen. we're going to go to more, more music. Nicole, what is it? As we bring the evening to a close, we're bringing out. Let's start again by Teresa Mahoney and Where We Belong by Steady Rush. I put you through the ringer And you returned the favor We searched each other's eyes And we almost surrendered Straight into shaft 
here on the corner cafe we got music for rarity we got um great conversations with our guests great conversations justin hooper is awesome yeah he was great guy just knowledgeable and unique mm-hmm. in how he explains his story yeah mm-hmm. so we'll have him back absolutely and soon to be a um a first time new father yes god help him in jesus name <laughs> jamie who's had two, <laughs> two two boys and they're now they've left the house so. yeah they're all grown up and yeah yep i can uh I can spread my wings now. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Just in time when they, they leave the house and then Jesus raptures you, Jamie. Yeah, I know, right? I'm like, what? <laughs> That's too funny. I was enjoying this popcorn in this movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for tuning into this edition of Corner Cafe. We've had a great time. Yes, we hey, have. Hey, and we encourage you to say hello to us. If you have. Someone you know who's an artist who can mm-hmm. be featured on the show, just go to cornercaferadio.com yeah. and contact us there on our website. We would love to have them. And uh, preferably that they do have talent. <laughs> let me, see. Well, we let have me a emphasize lot of, that. Well, yes. And, and there's, there They're are gifted so many and gifted worship yeah. leaders nowadays. Yeah, they really are. They really and are. I I just come across people I meet for the show. Yeah, or, I know, know huh? It's I've run just, into a lot of people at a lot of events, you know. Yeah, and, and we just um, have a, a ton of great talent all around us. So mm-hmm. we're so encouraged and blessed by that. All right. Well, we're going to leave with another song. Mm-hmm. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Corner Cafe. See you at the cafe next, next week. Next week.